Pangraft's lead prospect analyst Eric Longenhagen here, coming to you from my front yard in Tempe, Arizona. It's 11.14 p.m. on Sunday, the 27th of June. Another hot one here today. It's still 99 outside sitting here. It was a buck 12 today. And that's, you know, miserable. But, um... Things are going to taper down here the next couple days. Complex League Ball here in town uh, kicks off. So that's exciting. Here to do another edition of uh, Daily Prospect Notes. Before we get into the box scores, I'm going to check in on some of the stuff we've been working on. Um, so uh, one of the things that I did... Over the weekend, or I guess it would have been the back half of last week, was see this um, A's Cubs extended game. Here are the lineups from the game. I haven't s labeled the video from that uh, from this game yet. I thought about maybe doing that on stream, whatever this is, this screen record. Um, basically, my process for doing this when I have the lineups like this is just to write every last name in the lineup into the file name and then when I'm storing these on on an external hard drive uh, that's not hooked up to this right now um, I can search the whole hard drive for like individual players last names usually and then if I want to put together whatever you know a uh, Reggie Preciado tape you know to put on youtube or whatever i can just search preciato and every clip that he's in comes up doing it this way where i'm just copying and pasting um the names from the lineup into every chunk of video here is more efficient at this moment in time and then a little less efficient uh during like editing because i'll have pulled some clips that reggie preciato is not in he's just in this game um, I let the camera roll uninterrupted for most of this day, so you do end up with like. Loud. Huge chunks of video, and especially when we are talking about certain players, like here's Preciado number nine at short. Um, like he's just in a lot of clips. So this is at the A's place on Friday. Friday? Thursday. <laughs> Um, so yeah, little tip um, for video labeling. It's a thing I developed over a long period of time. Like just doing it that way is the fastest way to get the videos labeled and make them easy to index when you want to pull them back out to like throw footage together for something that you want to publish or um, – the slow-mo stuff is, like, very individualistic, but uh, the normal speed footage, I've just found that it's it's much easier to, like, label it with everyone's name and then worry about putting stuff together later. And there's a lot of... I like the dead time between pitches. I'm not the kind of guy who wants to, like, trigger his camera just when there's about to be something. Like, I like to see players interact with one another. I like to see mannerisms that fill in like the, the negative space okay. this was um i've been on the cubs lately because they're one of the two orgs whose list i got to do so there was that uh i ended up seeing tyler schlapper both both days was the starter but um the Cubs aren't allowing media at the complexes. So you can only see them on the road. Uh, I have an email out to the Cubs. Contact for extended. I'm assuming that this person is also going to be the AZL or formerly AZL, now the Arizona Complex League uh, contact. So hopefully that they, they will allow media for um, the AZL. <laughs> they, they had people at Sloan. All spring, in February and March. So for like two or three media people to be there, maximum. 
for uh, AZL seems reasonable. All right. Louisville and Indianapolis. We're back on this uh, this train again. We'll be diving in in depth here because there's just been so much other stuff going on the last couple of weeks. Been a little less consistent with the uh, box score checking. Nothing really going on here in this individual game. We see Alejo Lopez is continuing to do something. Uh, I made some calls on some of the guys who are on the uh, the rolling notes, like flagless, basically the players who are performing statistically to this point in the season. Who um, I want to know more about, but nece like can't necessarily go see individually. So Lopez is one of those guys. He is 25, but we've seen this before, where some of the players who are just the best hitters at AAA. Uh, turn out to be good, you know, even if they're a little bit older, whether it's Luke Voigt or Garrett Cooper, like these, these are guys who were just sort of staring you in the face. They're just crushing triple a. Um, and obviously Lopez is not just a first baseman. He's not a great second baseman, but guys like this have been on the list before. Um, uh, Ramon Urias, uh, Esteban Quiroz is another good example. These older middle infielders who I do think have like some amount of depth utility. And there's just something going on here statistically that is pretty remarkable. Okay. Like this is a really, really low, superlatively low swinging strike rate from this guy. He's got a track record of performing above his, uh, levels average. Obviously, we're talking about a guy who's been pretty old for low A, high A. Um, he missed a year because of a pandemic, you know, like, and then spent the first half of this year raking as a 25-year-old at double A. Like, that's not... There, there are good reasons to be skeptical. Um, but anyway, the call I made uh, was like... Um, you know, to check on this guy's expected stats, basically. Uh, like, the stack has the expected stats. Just to see, like, is his power legitimate? What are the exit velos like? Like, you know, um, is there a way to quickly just dismiss this guy? And there's not. Like, this is actually pretty close to what he's doing. Uh, obviously, there are some bad regression... There's a, there's a piece of that happening here, but it is an awful lot of um, contact. So where this guy belongs on the Reds list, you can see Tess um, audited the Reds list here uh, recently and touched on Lopez. So people should check that out. Uh, but, um, you know, this is in the 35 plus or 40 range offhand, just as a guy who seems pretty likely to at least have some big big league utility as, you know, versatile-ish uh, infielder with bat-to-ball skills. Like, that's just what's going on here. Um, so, nothing like Alejo Lopez doesn't belong on the notes for tomorrow because he went one for four. But he may be on a prospect list near you very soon. Jeff Hoffman with a good night. Ashton Godot. How has Ashton Godot been? How has Jose De Leon been? Who else is in this game? Braden Ogle, he was throwing harder this spring. Kind of curious to know how he's doing. Nick Mears is another late bloomer type guy who has had periods. His 2019 stuff was like primo, high leverage relief look on paper. Um, and it has just not happened command-wise. Yeah. 11 earned. Okay. Braden Ogle, lefty high school guy from half decade ago now. Uh, you know, lefty with some velo, and then coming out of pandemic was a lot of velo, like compared to before. Walking almost a guy per inning, so has popped up in, in an arm strength 
from, from an arm strength standpoint, but not from a, a performance one, has, has regressed actually. So nothing to do with Ogle as far as moving him onto the Buckos list here shortly. You know, De Leon's another guy who's like fought his conditioning coming out of the pandemic. Uh, it's been a thing that he's dealt with since college where he's just his conditioning has yo-yoed. Yeah, just a lot of walks when he's not at peak. Uh, and then while he, this 2015 year with the Dodgers, unbelievable. Doing this, at, you know, mostly in the upper minors. 76 innings, 105 strikeouts, 29 walks. But struggling to, uh, at 28, to like grab hold of a regular job on a pitching staff. So here's Ashton Godot, uh, another guy like, what do you do with pitching? Because sometimes it just does this. Like Ashton Godot, 2019, 78 innings as a starter, 12 walks, 91 punch outs. He went to the fall league this year and was he was maybe more dominant than this, but it looked like this over the course of six weeks in the fall. And then he just like tanks. Like he wasn't up at all in 2020. Well, he was for a little bit, but you can see it didn't go well. Uh, but just like wasn't – you would think that the Rockies could have just used the guy who looked like he did in – in 2019, it was like 91, 94, but with carry, consistent, uh, consistent command at the top of the zone. My brain working faster than my mouth now. Um, and yeah, like two distinct breaking ball shapes, command of those as well. It was just good, good player. And now has just been passed around like. Adam Rosales territory here. Look at all these orgs. But, um, you know, this is the, the org that it's one of the few now where you can bet on these guys growing velo-wise uh, because, you know, they have Kyle Bodie and he's the, the driveline guy. Like, there are lots of them, but he's the guy. <laughs> so um at this point nine walks like the command piece has regressed we have synergy wise for him let's just see what's going on a little glimpse it's got to be like, uh, you know, you can like sing a song for a certain amount of time without having to clear it. That's got to apply to this, right? <laughs> All right, so still in this 90-94 range. Actually, let's see what the pitch locations are like here on the heater. So still kind of living in this cut and carry area. Way more curveballs and sliders now. Yeah, but still commanding those too. Like, I don't know, man. Weird. Really weird. Uh, but pigeon's weird. This guy's got interesting underlying stuff. So I'm staying on him. He's on the reds list, even though he's been passed around the way he has. It's an indication that a lot of teams want to try it, but also that, like, teams are trying it and they're like, eh. All right. This is like a, a high scoring first inning here. We're not on pace to get through the box scores in, in close to an hour here. Uh, all right, so Worcester and Rochester. You get Blake Swihart, the revenge game. Um, Carter Keyboom, two for four. Double. Jaron Duran 0 for 4, 11 hits, just one strikeout for Daniel Gossett here for Worcester. 
Uh, Worcester 10 games over, Rochester 8 games under. What's going on with these guys? Louisville 11 under. Friedel, Oki, Errol, some of the up-down arms. Okay. Just kind of interesting to see who's on a team and see if that team's performing. It's not like necessarily a thing that's even remotely part of prospect decision making. Just kind of interesting to see. You know, like, all right, so Drew Ferguson, Cameron Mabin, Khalil Lee, Brandon Drury, Orlando Calixte, Chesler Cuthbert, Wilfredo Tovar. Um, I almost said Damian Jackson. <laughs> the wrong synapses are firing. This is the Stanford guy. Why can't I think of his first name? Drew? Drew Jackson. Yeah. Um, anyway, this group, this group's 12 and 35 and like has a bunch of, you know, some of it is because the big league club has been decimated by injuries and so therefore this roster has been as well. But like also these are good upper level dudes. What's with that? 12 and 35? All right, anyway. Uh, so this is Blue Jays and Mets. Yeah, nothing interesting going on. They want to have like a teeny tiny ERA. These guys for sure do not. Maybe that's what's going on here is that the pitching depth over in Syracuse is not great. Okay, so the Blue Jays got Rodrigo V. Hill. I kind of dig him. Former Marlin. Bat to ball, like lefty hitting catcher type guy. Kevin Smith's up to 273. Let's see what's going on with Kevin Smith here. Kevin Smith, he's a certain type of archetype of a player that can work. It's strikeouts, power. Wrong, Kevin Smith. Um, with up the middle defense. Tell me I picked the right one this time, All right? <laughs> but also, it's a lot of punch outs, and the approach is not good. <sighs> Pass over in the rule five. I mean, he's he's performing again. What does Clay Davenport have to say about the defense? Right, like I'm gonna. Or a guy like this would go on uh, a list again. And this guy's got pedigree. He's a fourth rounder out of Maryland from four years ago. He's a good college player. Um, but yeah, this is Clay Davenport's website. Whoops. Um, where it's basically got like you know defensive runs saved for the minor leagues. So Kevin Smith plus four at second or shortstop right now which is good based on clay's metrics uh, but obviously it's it's a, it is a data point in my opinion um, a lot of the time this will jive with like what you just think about the guy defensively it's another you know, offhand tool to use, but obviously, like, defensive metrics in general have some issues, and there's not the specific vector data that a lot of the uh, the big league defensive metrics utilize, so it's not as strong an indicator, but I do give it a glance. Like, Cabrian Hayes, you know, is, like, plus 13 or something. Like, you know, it, it does do a pretty good job. My stuff. There it is. All right, Norfolk and Gwinnett. Orlando Arcia, three for four, hitting 312 down there. I think that was a pretty shrewd pickup by Atlanta. I think there might be some real long term value there. The other Kevin Smith, four and two thirds, six punch outs. I'm not a big fan of the other Kevin Smith. His all tight look was was not not very good it is a lateral action lefty uh dependent on pitch execution it's been pretty good again this year though and was it was certainly good in 2019 so i think you're looking at a one more lefty here um 
But uh, this is the type of guy who can beat expectations. Like the, the pitchability lefties, basically. It's just like some of them are Ranger Suarez and some of them are Ryan Yarbrough and they just sort of exist in that space. Let's move on. Scranton put 19 on the pigs. Damn. Look at that. Rehab and Didi. Over two. Charlie Tilson, Matt Veerling, Mickey Moe sitting 201. Also bad. Raphael Marchand over three. David Parkinson. Again, like, look at David Parkinson. There was a point where David Parkinson looked like, is this just going to be a real back end rotation piece. This guy's got good second, he doesn't throw hard, uh, but has good secondary stuff and doesn't walk anybody. Like, look at some of this. <laughs> He's still kind of doing it, but the peripherals are still fine. Got whacked today, though. Right, anything else in here? The Yankees guys who went nuts. Big Giddy, Chris Gittins, seven, seven for four. <laughs> four for seven. Hoijun Park homered again. Gittins had two. Hoijun went four for five. All right, so Hoijun is another one of the names who I checked on, and he's going to be on the list soon, too. Um, there has been some physical development here it seems at least indicated by the trackman stuff he's another one where it's like let's i gotta he's one where i'm gonna watch film but i don't want to push it with synergy stuff <laughs> so i am gonna be in the mid-atlantic and northeast in late july i'm gonna go home and see my family for the first time since pandemic I didn't go home for Christmas, like, 2019. I don't even remember if I was home for Thanksgiving. Like, I don't remember the last time I was home. It was in 2019. Um, so it's time to do that. Uh, and, like, this is... I'm going to see Scranton one time at least, so... We'll get a look at Hoi John. But he's in the mix here, because he's been going nuts, and, like, there's underlying stuff that indicates that there's been a change. Um, like, again, in the TrackMan data, what's his Clay Davenport stuff? Definitely not getting this done in under two hours. Cats are chilling in the yard. Um, like I said, it is hot, and so they're pretty limited to when they can go outside. So I've been, I go to bed typically sometime between midnight and one, and... Um, you know, I tap the yogurt lid and the cats come home. And uh, Hoi John, basically even at both middle and field spots here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then they wake me up at like between four and five, and I just kind of let them out. And then that is the window where things are kind of hairy because it's just like barely morning light and I'm I go back to sleep and they're just sort of out but things have been pretty chill lately all right so Cody Clemens two for two with a bomb Drew Hutchison five innings five punchies on how Rondon five earned but didn't walk anybody he's got a 6-1 ERA though Anhel Rondon is another guy who, like, quote-unquote, looked good at the alt site, but I didn't really buy it. So far, that's been right. Um, I think he's a reliever. Nagowski, what's up with Nagowski? Nagowski, John Nagowski played for Estrellas um, in the Dominican Winter League. Wait, no, Toros. Toros del Este, excuse me. Jeez. Most of the Cardinals guys played for, for Toros del Este. Um, anyway, he was awesome down there, and there's another one of these guys where, is he just like one of the better hitters in AAA? Does this guy just, should he just be someone's pre-arb first baseman? 
like Jesus Aguilar and just like either perform or not. But um, he's certainly he's been hurt, right? I just gloss over that. So he started a rehab assignment on May 7th. Left hand bone bruise, April 23rd. All right, so the hand injuries, this is, you know, I'm going to leave Nagaski on. Did he do anything worth leaving on? No. I'm just going to leave. He's going to be in the mix here. This guy, I think, belongs on the uh, the Cardinals list, perhaps, as like a 35-plus. Like, I just like this guy as a hitter. It's a bad profile. It's a backwards profile. Um, bats right, throws left, which limits you to first base in the outfield and puts you at a platoon disadvantage most of the time. But um, I think he's a good player. All right, St. Paul and Columbus. This is the Twinkies and Cleveland. Two for five day for Andres Jimenez. Gabriel Arias down in the six hole. Three for four day. Ron Mill hit a homer in a rehab assignment. Nolan Jones, home run number four. Two for four day for him. How's he been doing lately? It was a really rough start for Nolan Jones. He, of all the guys, like the guys who are at the top of the 50 future value tier, especially on the offseason prospect list, they're the high confidence guys, you know? That's like where Kylie and I put like Brandon Lau and stuff, and it's where Josh Lowe is now, and uh, Nolan Jones is, was, is, is up there too. Like, it's just like the Pete, Pete Alonso was there. Like, it's just the high confidence 50s. Um, and uh, like Tristan Casas was there, Jeter Downs is there. Um, but Jones came out, it was really bad. What if we actually, I want to use fan graphs for this. I think that our tool for this has become better than MLB.com. So when you go to the minor league player game, like you can, it's really easy to set the dates via the calendar here. So like, let's just pick, let's see, when is, I'm going to pick a purposefully arbitrary date. Let's just pick the June 1st, or do we want to do this day where he starts hitting in, in May? Let's try that. And then it just gives you the line for that window here. And you can go to the advanced tab without uh, wiping away your date selection. All right, so since May 26th, Nolan Jones, 242, 369, 451. That's good. This feels better. It feels as though he's adjusting to AAA pitching. So that's good. All right, so I'm going to leave Nolan Jones primed here too. He's a good one to talk about. There's a talking point there. We pick the window. We kind of kind of cherry pick the window, but like that's what you do. <laughs> All right, nothing else happening here. Oh. Cats chilling in the yard. Uh, a development with the black cat in the neighborhood is that uh, it has a collar and a bell on it now. And I've heard a couple cat fights down the street this week, and I went and investigated the one tonight, and the black cat was down there, so that is he's the catalyst. But someone has a collar on it now, and I don't know why. I don't know if someone owns it. Uh, if they do, that's puzzling because like it looks like it has mange so i don't maybe someone put a collar on it so that they could know it was around and it wouldn't fight their cat right like but also like the black cat if it, that's the case like it's got to hunt stuff and it's hard to do that when your prey knows you're coming uh all right so omaha and iowa anyway like i don't know how to put word out in the neighborhood like hey what's going on with this cat does anyone know Who put the collar on the cat um, all right, well, this, for whatever reason, this box score is doing that auto refresh thing. I think someone must forget to, like, close out a game feed somewhere, and that's why it does this. Jackson Coar got sent down. People, if you know, if you follow in my work, that I'm not skeptical that he's going to be good. I just, like, have him in the bullpen. Um, so... Like, his speed bumps in the big league rotation, like, that's, I think he belongs in the bullpen. 
They don't have to do it now, but I just think ultimately that's where he ends up. Uh, because of fastball shape and breaking ball quality. All right, so this is Vegas and Salt Lake. Yeah, Lazardo down there. Again, man, pitching sucks. What happens with pitching? Uh, yeah, nothing else really going on. Joe Dell 0 for 5, two punch outs. I don't think that's going to work out. How? That one, at least we should have we seen coming. All right, Reno and Sacramento. Jake McCarthy, two for five. He was recently promoted. The Diamondbacks like him. I did. I put him in the extras. Like I just don't buy it. Um, they feel like his swing is better now. Um, I just don't know that he has the tools to be anything more than like maybe he's a four, but and he should be on the list as a forty. But I just wasn't into the fall look, and he's. Pretty old. Doesn't she should be performing at double A, frankly. Imanol, no, Ildemaro Vargas, uh, who I do like as like it was nice I to watch to go from watching Domingo Leba to Vargas. <laughs> there was a play like I was in there and pro, I think it was against the Angels when Leba just decided not to try to run out a double play ball. And um when you've lost like 14 games in a row or whatever, you got to run that out. <laughs> and then it didn't surprise me that he was like cut the next day. And Vargas runs that shit out. <laughs> Vargas has feel. Um, okay. Reno and Sacramento. This is D-backs and Giants. Tyler Beatty just sort of sitting here. Kerbin Castro, how's he doing? Kiri May is another one who at one point was a 45 for me. Tanked. Yeah, nothing really going on here. Stu Fairchild sitting in the six hole. Kirvin Castro, 14 walks. So that's the impediment right now. That's why he's sitting in AAA. Still has that stuff. Uh-oh. I goofed myself here. I'm really putting my PC through a lot right now. I have a lot of stuff going on down here. Video stuff happening. Labeling things. Imported stuff. Lineups. OBS is running. All right, Vidal Bruhan in this Durham Jacksonville game. Vidal Bruhan, one for five with three strikeouts. He's hitting like a buck ninety the last month. Um, so hope he didn't move him prematurely. You know. Uh, nothing else going on offensively here. Whoa, Shane Boz. Yeah, man, like he is killing it. Wow, wow, wee, wow. Five walks, 46 innings. He's a triple A now, too. Yeah, all right. He's another one where it's definitely time to put on the tape and reevaluate that one pretty hard. Maybe he's, he's cleaned up his act command-wise and whatnot. Did I close the box scores again? What time is it? All right. Oklahoma City and Sugarland. Kyber Ruiz, two for four. He's hitting a cool 280. Stay the course with Kyber. Alex Vesia down here again. I thought he looked good enough. 
And the big leagues to just kind of stay there. Oh, it looks like RG split. Or it's on the wall, maybe? I don't know. Wherever he is, he's fine. Yeah, another one struggling with walks, eh? Okay. Charlotte and Nashville, White Sox, uh, Brewers. <laughs> Jake Berger, two for three. Cooper Hummel, homer and a double. Left field. Cooper Hummel's one of those guys who, like, if he could only catch. Uh, Peyton Henry, over three. Has Jake Westbrook's batted ball profile shifted at all? Jamie Westbrook, not Jake Westbrook. Jeepers. Kind of, sort of. All right, I'm going to stash him, too. So we want... No, oh, I'm gonna write these down now, actually, because I took away the old Jones one. So Jones, Westbrook, play John Park, Boz. Who else did I pull aside here? Nagowski. Okay, I'm just gonna clear these tabs off. So I'm gonna write and write names down. Thomas Jenkins had a decent start. A cutter curveball guy. We know that Lopez had a good start here. Hmm. A lot of walks. Another guy who just belongs in the bullpen, probably. Okay, Tacoma Albuquerque. Almost there with Triple A. Kelnick one for four. Jose Godoy one for four. Connor Joe two for four. Yeah, Sam Hilliard is hitting 218 still. Not a lot happening here either. All right, let's move on to double A. We're going to have a lot more of these to go through in short order. I don't know if it justifies doing a... Uh, Daily prospect notes that are more normal Monday and Tuesday. It might sometimes just because the complex level ball off days are Wednesdays and Sundays. All right, so Somerset and Portland. Nine strikeouts for Glenn Otto and five and a third. Give up five runs, though. Pedro Castellanos, two hits, including his seventh home run. Hudson Potts hit home run number two. Hartford and Richmond. Which Snyder is this? Yeah. David Hill's back. That's nice to see. I like David Hill in, in college. Hey, look at that. David Hill's not... He's doing all right. All right, so there's some... Uh, there's some Rockies pitchers who are actually doing okay. Um, Hill, Mitch Kilkenny, Briley and Eusebio's had some pretty strong starts. Here's another good start from Caleb Killian with the Giants. Five and a third, seven strikeouts. Um... He came up in a chat recently. Uh, I checked on him with a source. And the source and I could not figure out why this guy has been so dominant. Definitely his fastball has carry. It's 91-93 with, with carry. Um, his secondary stuff has distinct shape. But it's all just like, you know, below average in terms of in individual pitch quality. Uh, except for the fastball. It's probably closer to average. And with that... Uh, Level of stuff, he's he's dominating double A. So 
Um, it was a phone call that left me skeptical. My notes on Killian from the fall, I saw him a couple of times, are indicative of the same stuff visually. So, uh, you know, the, the, the data and my visual report are both like, you know, this is a depth starter maybe. Um, but he is, his numbers do not look like a depth starter. Taylor Snyder, 26 from CSU Pueblo. Okay. Thunderwolves. Uh, yeah. Okay. Performing as well. 13th rounder. Eh, maybe we'll stash him here. Just to, that's another older name. Whatever. I'd rather ask than not be wrong. Miss something. New Hampshire and Bowie. Bowie's on the list to see during my mid Atlantic run. I can feel my skin starting to feel dry, just kind of sitting out here. It's still 99. It's almost midnight. Franny's laying in the grass, and Archie, I think, is. Archie's split. Uh, all right, so these teams, Blue Jays, Orioles, Sama Taylor is another one where it's like, how is this guy doing this? But he is crushing it right now. Robert Newstrom, two for three. Toby Welk, home run number two. This Dorian guy has 10 dingers. Patrick Dorian, 25. That's old. Kingston High School, 2014. Wow. Yeah. Career high in homers. A lot of punchies. Skip. Ofelki Peralta, five and two thirds, five strikeouts, hard thrown guy. Harrisburg and Altoona. Harrisburg's been much better than those first three weeks. Uh, KJ Harrison, three for four. Who's the Corridor guy? Corridor. I can't really roll my R's. O'Neill Cruz, one for four. Play shortstop. Unremarkable box score here. Erie and Akron. Erie's 12 games over now. This is a pretty solid matchup. Will Benson, center field, three for four. In the leadoff spot, he had a double and a triple. Riley Green, 0 for 5. Torque, 1 for 5. Dylan Dingler, 1 for 5. Okay. Gonna check on this Fernandez guy. Sub three ERAs, twenty three. Punch out per inning. In twenty six innings, he's been promoted once. All right. Just making sure no one's like blowing two guys an inning away. I suppose the Cleveland side of this ledger is likely to have someone like that. Mikologic is one of those guys. Manuel Alvarez, 25. All right, don't have to worry about that. All right, moving on. Tulsa and Springfield. Tulsa, seven games over. Seven games over. Yvonne Herrera, two for five. Top 100 guy, Nolan Gorman, got another start at second base. He doubled. One for four with a walk. Devin Mann, two for four. Double. Jaron Kendall hitting home run number seven. Part of a four run seventh. What was it a grand slam? Was it a Grammy? Yeah, look at the walk off grand slam for uh, Jaron Kendall. What was that on? Is it on the hell site here? Thank you. 
Oh, he like no strike. It's a grand slam. Pitch. Twink. Swinging a deep drive to right field. It's a grand slam. Healthy guy. Ball game over. The Tulsa Drillers have done it again. A walk-off game-winning grand slam by Jaron Kendall. <laughs> Two Gatorade buckets. <laughs> Double barrel with the Gatorade at OKC. Or in Tulsa, excuse me. All right. How's Jaron Kendall? What a dramatic win for the Tulsa Drillers. Their fourth come from behind pitch. Forty percent. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know, man. There's still so much. Like the stuff that this guy can do off a bench for you. I still think means that he might just be a rosterable big leaguer. He, you don't want him playing every day. But like situationally, let's say this guy hit a walk off grand slam. The team. Like, if you're down by two and you got a couple guys on, like, you just want this guy in there just to roll the dice that you're going to get, like, a natural 20 and he's going to do what we just watched him do, right? Whereas, like, some guys... Some guys don't have it on the... Like, you can't roll that, you know? Like, this guy just gives you a shot when most other guys don't for something like that to happen or to steal a base. So I feel like he's still got big league utility, but you definitely don't want to run him out there every day. <sighs> All right. How's Michael Grove doing? 838. Eight. All right. Montgomery and Biloxi. Terang, two for five. Tristan Lutzomer, number six, in a one for four day. Chad Spanberger, who's kicked around now, three for five. Power hitting guy from Arkansas. Blue Jays Rockies now with Milwaukee. Um, on the Montgomery side, JT Aranda, who's another one of these like older, can kind of play second base, has great contact numbers, huskier, unathletic type of guy generally. Here he is playing first base, two for three tonight. Um, another like sleeper upper level guy in that uh, the vein that we sort of discussed tonight. Hitterish up the middle guy with like not a lot of power. Noah Zavolas, this guy from the Ivy League, I think it's Harvard. He's also changed hands at one point, was part of a trade. What deal was that? Ben Gamble, that's right. Ben Gamble for this guy. So, Interesting pitch trait, dude. Uh, is not going to be on the uh, Brewers list. Doubt it. He'll even make the honorable mentions, but was just like a a pitch trait and execution type of flyer when they traded for him. Uh, Rocket City and Chattanooga. Mitch Ney, two bombs, three for five effort from him. Nice. Ibondel Isabel hit home run number eight. That's a dude with 80 raw. Uh, Cooper Criswell, five and two thirds, six strikeouts. He's another guy who is like on my list of dudes to ask about who I actually did not run past the source. Ali Ortega struck out two and two thirds of an inning. Uh, Connor Higgins went two thirds as well. Those are like Potential up-down relief type guys in this system, I think. For Cincinnati, Jose Barrero, Ofer, still holding at 300, though. He's had a very strong year. Feel pretty good about that. Really wonder what this, like, what his slider chase rate is. That's a very specific question I'll be asking analysts this offseason when it comes time to talk about Jose Barrero's uh, placement on the top 100. He's towards the back of the 55 future value group now with like the high upside, high risk, uh, and variants like shortstop guys, Jazz Chisholm, Jason Dominguez, uh, who else moved into that area? 
That type of guy. Drew Waters. Um, Tennessee and Mississippi. Tennessee, 14 games underwater here. This is not a prospect -y bunch. Chase Shrump in the six hole, playing third base, 0 for 4, hitting a buck 67. Not what I would have guessed had transpired this year for him. It's a first round bat out of UCLA. So, kind of perplexing there. Tyrone Harris with the Braves. It's a role-playing outfield type I like with power. One for three. Yeah, not an everyday guy, but definitely a piece I think Tyrone Harris is. Lugo kid, does he come up for me at all? Am I thinking of someone else? Yeah, I think so. Maybe Brendan Little will be interesting to write up just to kind of knock out a Cubs blurb tonight. How's he doing? He's throwing harder, I know that. Arkansas and Northwest Arkansas. Kansas City over here on the right, and the uh, Mariners on the left. Josh Morgan, two for five, the multi-positional catcher guy. Jordan Cowan, who I've always been kind of a fan of. Two bombs on the night, two for five for him as well. Uh, Joe Rizzo, who I've never liked, two for five. He homered two. Joe Rizzo definitely has feel for hit. He just is a three athlete with no body projection at like age 18. Well, back then. But now I don't even know how he is. Uh, Angel Zerpa gave up eight runs in three innings here for Northwest Arkansas. It's his second start at Double A. Uh, kind of an all hands on deck Johnny Holstaff game for the Mariners group here. Colin Snyder, who I like as a relief prospect, ending in a third in this one. Carlos Sanabria, who really slimmed down and looked stuff looked resurgent during the spring has a 188 this is a guy who the Astros couldn't keep on the roster anymore he had really kind of softened up and his stuff regressed and it was like four average pitches with three command and um, now with this leaner body this spring the command was still like a three yeah you can see 15 walks in 24 innings but he was back in the four to seven range with a, with a plus change up so um it's big league bullpen stuff it's just about the command so he's on that uh, middle inning stalwart slash up down threshold uh, okay let's move on wichita and midland you from midland you from midland you would say that you from Midland. Again, a pretty unremarkable box score. A bunch of the A's prospects are in the middle of this order. Midland is a little bit underwater here, just about 500 though. Brady Feigl, who I just like as, you know, piece of a pitching staff, had another solid start. Eight hits, but no walks, five strikeouts in six innings. Ground ball machine, that guy. Chris Valamont came over from Miami in the. I forget what deal was again. This is where the rubbers really meet the road. I knew that, was it, yeah, okay, Sergio Romo. Duh, it's sweet in the Sergio Romo deal. Uh, okay. Game two of this doubleheader between these two squads. Nicky Allen at two knocks. Jeremy Ironman homered. Twelve oh eight AM now. Oh, my posture's been terrible this whole time. Why am I doing that? I see everything from back here, so why don't I just do that? Alright. Birmingham and Pensacola. Micah Adolfo two for with a double and a bomb. He's got twelve bombs. It's kind of scary that he's only at double A, but JJ Bladey, center field, 0 for 4. Buck 93, he's sinking. It feels like real like he's sinking. Uh, Connor Pilkington, eight strikeouts for Pilkington. 
All right. It's kind of surprising. Might be someone worth checking on. All right, so Westbrook I wrote down. Taylor Snyder. Just... Yeah, David Hill. David Hill was like a four-pitch guy. Um, at San Diego who they kind of ran to the ground and but like I liked him and then he went to an org that is not the best developing pitchers let's be honest and he got hurt Yeah, man, 48 strikeouts and 42 and two-thirds against just 14 walks. That merits another look. This was a pitchability guy at Mississippi State who uh, – or Ole Miss. Um, wait, which one is it? Mississippi State. All right. Uh, who I thought was an overdraft – because he didn't have good stuff, but he's having a pretty good year so far. It's double A, but still. All right. Adolfo, 64 strikeouts and 162 at bats. It's going to be really hard for him to overcome how much swing and miss there is, but this guy's got seven raw. Uh, Binghamton and Redding. Redding's been terrible. Redding's been bad. Bryson Stott, one for five. He's hitting 294 since promotion, though. That's good. There you go. A little bit of Francisco Morales life. His ERA is probably sunk for the year, but like. Uh, if he can stop walking so many guys, he can. It just looks good. Like. Still, he is what he is. Still, she's like I think this is a two-pitch relief prospect, but maybe a closer. Uh... All right, Amarillo and Corpus Christi. Another pretty good start for Jonathan Bermudez, who is on my list, but who I haven't asked a source about yet. Bryce Jarvis was recently promoted to double-A. Five walks and five in the third for him in this one. He is one of the Diamondbacks' better prospects and was their mid-first-round pick in last year's draft. San Antonio and Frisco. Eggy Rosario, three for four with two home runs. One of them off of A.J. Alexi, one of them off of Hans Kraus. Those are, pretty, those are two good pelts to have on your wall. Mid to upper 90s pelts. Josh Young, since uh, what was it? it? Was his foot stress 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 fracture in his foot? Over four to 93 so far. That's good. Steel Walker two for four. Bubba Thompson homered in this one. Uh, okay, I'm gonna let Bubba continue to do his thing. I'm not gonna check on how he's doing. All right, that's gonna do it for Double A. Francis is just passed out in the yard. And Archie is MIA. That's okay. I am starting to, I'm at the point where I'm like kind of starting to sweat now. Out here, I might check it out and go back in. Take my shirt off, maybe. Uh, Fort Wayne and South Bend. Johnny Hamza, third base in left field. This is a guy who was a high school infielder who converted to catching in pro ball. So here we see him playing a couple other positions. It's the first I've noticed that. Yeah, Augustin Ruiz has power and a, and a good body, and he's always been pretty solid. Uh, he had... 
He had a home run. It went three for five. Let me pull him aside. Ethan Elliott, only two innings from him. Really like to see him promoted. Nothing else really going on in this box score. Here's a Great Lakes Lake County double dip. Brian Lavastida, three for three. Home run number four. Joe Naranio also homered. Andy Pajes, Oford. Brian Rocky Oford. Other game of this doubleheader. Lava Stita, two for five. Let's pull him aside, shall we? Five hits in a day is pretty good. Pajes led this one off in center field. Leonel Valera, man. Like, he's another one where fantastic frame, power, shortstop, but just so many strikeouts. Andy Pajes hit home run number 15. The Great Lakes Park Factor. Matt Eddy puts this uh, together every year, and it is in, like indispensable as a resource. So thank you to Matt for doing this. Minor League Park Factors for everyone. These are from 2019. Um, I'm just scrolling through the Target. Great Lakes. I just kind of want a little bit more context for what some of these uh, these bats are doing at, at Great Lakes right now. Valera and um, Pajes. Oops. Okay. Maybe I passed over it. Okay, so it's actually pretty remarkable what they're doing. I wish these tables were sortable. In general, the Midwest League affiliates have been traditionally suppressant to offense. Um, some of that is the weather early in the year is just so unique to the baseball playing landscape. It's just so inclement. The guys go there, especially like, you know, let's say you're a young Dominican kid and you played in the AZL last year and now the first time you're going to play baseball not in Arizona or the Dominican Republic is in, uh, like, Great Lakes. It's You're in Bowling Green, Kentucky, you know, like, um, or Ohio. And it's just like, oh, I need a ski mask. <laughs> All right. Wins and Salem in Asheville. Joe Perez, the former two-way high schooler, uh, righty power bat. Like, kind of the, the broad strokes profile is like, this guy is like uh, J.D. Davis. Um, it's like a lazy comp. But the skills are kind of like that. This guy has power and the plus arm. And is a former two-way player. So uh, he's got 10 bombs. And the strikeout stuff right now is pretty manageable. So I'm going to pull his name aside. Greenville and Greensboro. All the green. Uh, Matt Frazier, one for five. Nick Gonzalez, one for four with a walk. A couple of runs scored and a ribby because of a home run. Grant Gambrell? No, that's not. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is because of the trade recently. Nine strikeouts and four and a third for Boston. Recently acquired, like, power pitcher type relief prospect most likely. How's Salucci doing? Brendan Salucci. This is a big time Velo Spike guy from quarantine. Like a lefty with premium arm strength, but a lot of stiffness. You can see like in the walks. 
Uh, he's over on the Red Sox list if people want to check him out. Okay. Be over Pagero. Greensboro's pretty loaded. Do they come even close to where I'm going to be? I think I'm going to fly into D.C. and see my brother. And then work my way north. Like, I'll, I'll use D.C. as my home base for, like, a couple days. And then I'll go north to Pennsylvania and, like, see my dad and I'll, more of my extended family than usual just because a bunch of people are going to be around. Yeah... I am not going to be able to see Greensboro, though. You really don't come anywhere close. That's right, I'm like fooled by... Well, no, see, there they are. They have a home game versus Hudson Valley. This is when I'd have to see them. At the end of September. Maybe I'll send some mercenary to see, to see them. Some mercenary from the Northeast. Uh, I have someone in mind, actually. <laughs> when do classes at Penn start again? Uh, Dayton and West Michigan. Eric Yang had a double. Yeah, nothing really, nothing happening here. Fisher is this again? Andy Fisher, that's right, okay. Okay. This West Michigan team is pretty prospecty too. Alright, Spokane and Hillsboro. Jorge Barosa, hitterish center field type guy, little compact D backsy type. Three for five. I'm hoping that some of these Spokane college bats get promoted so that when I see Harford at Bowie like a month from now that some of these guys are there. Pretty please, pretty please, Colorado. Come on, McIver's hitting 286. Promote him. He should already be promoted. I thought maybe I heard the Black Cat's new bell. I might take a pause here shortly. Mitch Kilkenny, another pretty good start, though. Five and two-thirds, six strikeouts. Eight base runners, 58 of 92 pitches for strikes. Pretty strong. So, yeah, bounce back. Some bouncy back stuff for the Rockies' arms. Some bouncy back stuff. I don't talk like that. What the fuck? Um, Roman Aberdeen, Michael Harris, two for five, Bryce Ball, home run number five, it's his second one in as many days, I think. Okay, not a whole lot else happened in there, Peoria and Wisconsin, they played a twin killing as well, twin killing, what the fuck, double dip, double header, not twin killing. This is why, like, when you just sit here and talk for three hours, it's like, oh, no wonder broadcasters say dumb stuff. Uh, all right, so this Wisconsin lineup is of interest because I'm working on the Brew Crew list right now. So David Hamilton, one for three. Corey Howe, another home run. He's going to be stuffed on there, folks. Get ready. The tools are exploding. Someone put it to me that way. Garrett Mitchell, two for three. Uh, yeah, Bullock had another good start. Justin Bullock's kind of interesting. He's going to be towards the bottom of the uh, the Brewers list. Here's where that's sitting right now. This is a name I want a little bit more dope on. Hendry Mendez in the in the Dominican Republic. This guy is like making a name for himself right now. Hendry Mendez. This is where things are at. A little snapshot of where the list is at. Probably hoping to get this done tomorrow so that it can run Tuesday, but it's pretty long. 
So that's going to be tough. I also want to go to an ACL game tomorrow night, so. It's only going to be 100 tomorrow. All right, let's do low A. And then I'm going to try to find my cat son and call it a night and then write in the morning, which is another thing that's a barrier between me and finishing the Brewers list tomorrow, but it's time to chill out. It's 12-24. All right, Palm Beach from Fort Myers. Jordan Walker, three for four. He's having a great year. Um... Yeah, nothing else really blowing me away here. Any of these guys' names I want to check on? Nunez, I guess. So many walks. So many walks. Pass. All right. Daytona Beach at Clearwater. Ijosuar Garcia 0 for 5. Luis Garcia 2 for 4. The triple. Rickson Wingrove hit a home run. Aussie guy strikes out a lot. A lot of power. On the Reds side over here, Daytona. Who's the Proctor kid? James Proctor. These are sweet. Wow. I like these uh, Tortugas hats. Very strong. James Proctor from Princeton, huh? Was this an NDFA guy who, like, they've turned into a dude? Holy... 51 strikeouts in 37 innings? Holy crap. All right. See, Reds, man. Wowzers. Well, wait, we can see how what this guy's stuff is like. Austin Hendricks hit a ball 104. Okay. Proctor and Edouard Segovia had the most swings and misses in this game. Let's look at Segovia first. He's a prospect already. This is what I've come to expect from him 91 to 95. Slideys. I think this guy's like a maybe reliever Segovia. Maybe he's a fifth starter. He's young, but he's fairly maxed out. Like body wise, anyway. I guess it doesn't preclude people from throwing harder anymore. All right, so the first thing that I noticed about James Proctor, who's not throwing that hard, is that he spins it a lot for how not hard he throws. And also that there's almost no lateral break on any of these which is an indication to me that he's a vertical arm slot guy or, you know, is somehow creating pure backspin on the baseball in some way, which probably means that he's got, like, you know, like, the this is the power pitcher's fastball archetype. Um, I'd be surprised if, like... He's getting some, some whiffs on the breaking stuff, too. He's got four pitches. Yeah, like he actually only... It's not like he's a, a carry goof. He only got one swinging strike on his fastball. His fastball definitely plays in that way, but it's not, like, dominant here, even in low A. So some of the secondary stuff is what's doing the damage. Okay. So this, you know, and like that's all I know about. Like I'm not gonna like I can't put a guy on a prospect list based on just knowing this stuff, but it is like there's maybe something interesting going on there. I've got him saved. 
And also, like, these hats are cool. Um, all right. Dunedin and St. Lucie. Mac Mueller, the giant dude from Baylor, two for four. Everybody else had a one hit or less. Joel Concepcion got the start in, for Dunedin, hard thrown dude. Did okay. Who's the Griffin guy here? David Griffin, 24, Curry College. What's up, honey? Hi, honey. All right, 24 year old in low A. I'm going to skip it. Well, we can check to see how hard he's throwing at least, so let's do that. See if Archie comes. Okay. So Alex Ramirez hit a ball 106. That's an interesting thing. But we are here for this. The gas. Cray Finfrock. That can't be real. <laughs> Where's this guy from? Cray Finfrock. Oh, yeah. Sorry about Miami. That sucks. 25 years old. Central Florida, Seneca, South Carolina. Cray Finfrock. Okay. David Griffin, 14 swings and misses. How? Tell me how. Yeah, something out there. David Griffin sliders. He's throwing kind of hard. Okay. Moving on, just looking at stuff. He's got a six ERA, low A, but getting a lot of swings and misses. Fayetteville and Canapolis. This is Houston and the White Sox. Brian Ramos at second base, two for four, home run number eight. It's pretty good. Hitting 243. Bunch of one-furs on the Astros side. Alex Santos. Probably here, Alex Santos, through just the one inning. So that's not the best. Andrew Dalquist, three and two thirds. Kind of got a piggyback situation happening in Kannapolis. Carolina and Down East. Brewers again, so I'm going to just. Pay particularly close attention to this for like two seconds. Noah Campbell. Noah Campbell's got a hell of a frame on him. Holt is not swinging and missing. Neither is Valerio. Joe Gray's hitting for more power. Measurable power is way, way up. Home run number 11 for him. Xavier Warren at third base. Catcher conversion guy. Like, converted to catching. Abner Uribe, two innings, five punch outs for him. This guy's been up to 103. Abner Uribe. Uh, Mason Englert had a pretty good start for Down East. That's nice to see. One of those high school guys from a couple years ago, draft class, Texas. Okay. Jace Easley, dude, I dig. Went to high school with uh, Nolan Gorman, Damien's kid. Uh, diminutive little multi-positional player in center field here. Just a good baseball player with not a lot of strength. Luis Angel Acuna went three for four. 
He's hitting 252. Dustin Harris, two for four. That's my guy. I like Dustin Harris a lot. Acuna, 250, 350, 405. Yeah, that feels about right. Kind of a smattering of extra base hits. Yeah. Okay. Tampa and Lakeland. The Yankee Tarpons put a big number up on Lakeland. Beck Way. Three innings in his start. Trevor Holloway again coming out of the bullpen here. Who's this Boyle character? Sean Boyle. That's right, DBU. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty good. Beckway, let's just see how Beckway, there's a junior college guy from last year with big arm strength. Okay, yep, still throwing hard. This is the pitch that I think is going to have to be meaningful here is the changeup. I'm not sure this guy's ever going to have a good breaking ball. All right, then we wanted Boyle. All right, so not throwing hard. Sink. Big, big spin on slide piece. Okay. All right. Moving on. Jupiter and Bradenton. I think someone threw it in this game, right? Yeah, look at this. Wow, Jared Jones. Four innings, three base runners, 11 strikeouts. Who followed him up here? Domingo Gonzalez. This guy's got a lot of K's as well. All right, well, we're going to check on this one for sure. Escado, Michael Escado, two hits. Sammy Siani, two hits. Alexander Mojica, two hits. D.O. Burgos, my guy, is hitting buck 93. That's a bad sign for him. No defensive value there. He's DH only. All right. Fredericksburg and Delmarva. We're almost done. Lamar Sparks. Hey. Christopher Cespedes, minor league rule five guy with big exit velos from Cleveland. Two hits, home run, and a double. Hitting 209 only, so I'm going to skip that for now. Zach Peak. This is the guy I couldn't think of who um, was part of that Dylan Bundy pinata. Good start for him. Should be above this though. Fresno and Visalia. Zach Veen starting to get hot. Three for four. Double. Grant Levine doubled as well. AJ Vukovic. Another guy who I'm like lukewarm on, the D-backs love. A scout I trust who's not with them, um, but covers their org, loves him as well. But just this, that was not my takeaway from uh, his amateur stuff and then last fall. Just think it's going to be first base. All right, let's move on. Lynchburg, Salem. Gilberto Jimenez, two for five. Yeah, four hit day for Angel Martinez. Might be worth writing about him now. He might move into the hundred soon. He's really performing and he is tooled out.
Cole Wilcox, two and a third. Alika Williams had two hits. Charleston and Augusta. The Rays and the Braves. Another pretty good start for Joey Estes. Myrtle Beach in Columbia. Pinango, two for four. Matt Mervis. Homer in a double here. Fabian Pertus had two hits. Ethan Hearn's not hitting. Ethan Santana's back up there now, though. That's good. Want to see him do well. Daryl Collins, another three hit day. He's doing very well for Columbia. Modesto in Lake Elsinore. Oh, man. El Unico, the taco place in Lake Elsinore. That's an 80. That It's closed. Bad news. Um, the pandemic maybe killed my two favorite places to eat in all of California, in El Unico and Solmi, um, in Elsinore and Long Beach, respectively. Just like holes in the wall, tacos um, at El Unico and Korean-Mexican fusion at Solmi. Um... San Jose and Ranch for Cucamonga. Luis Matos, two for four. Marco Luciano hit home run number 10 on the year. Your beat Vivas had two more hits. One of them was a triple. Eddie's Leonard, uh, like an interesting little utility type of prospect, hit home run number seven. Angel de Jesus, who is like the high variance power strikeout. Maybe he stays at shortstop type guy. If not, then the profile is flimsy because then it's a third baseman with a lot of strikeouts. But he went three for five here. Miguel Vargas, two for five with a home run. Stockton and Inland Empire. This will round it out for the night. Thanks for joining me again. How long did I do? Okay, an hour and a half. That's about right. Um, Inland Empire and Stockton. This is Oakland and Anaheim. Uh, little Danny Bautista, two for four. Yeah, Adam Seminaris had a good start, speaking of Long Beach. And that's sort of it. Okay, so... Here, I don't, because I, I cleared out some of the tabs. Here's some of the candidates to be discussed in tomorrow's post. Jared Jones is a must include. Oh, let's do that, right? Let's. No, I'm going to call it here. Jared Jones, it would have been nice to show some video of Jared Jones tonight, but we did some stuff. We did some things. Um, beyond just scrolling through the box score, so I'm happy with it. So, But Jared Jones, for sure, is going to be in. Tomorrow's box scores. Box scores. Um, I'll read off the other guys as I click through here. Uh, Jamie Westbrook, Nolan Jones, Hoi Jun Park, uh, John Nagowski, Shane Boz, uh, Taylor Schneider, David Hill, Brandon Little, Connor Pilkington, and the mix of guys who you've seen. Here's thanks for joining me again for another Daily Prospect Notes weekly screen record edition. Uh, look for Brewers and potentially Cubs prospect lists at the site this week. Um, more draft content. Kevin and I are hoping to have another mock out at some point this week as well. Um, those of you that have lasted this